Howdy folks, I'm Jaded Jalapeno Peppers, jealously jabbing jumping jelly beans. I'm Amber. And here are more jumping jelly beans for us to jab at. We do it because we're jalapenos, and we've got spiky little pitchforks that we use to stab jelly beans, which are not very nice at all, because they're not spicy. Let's get started. Alright folks, and our first letter is titled, Am I a Jerk? I'm thinking of breaking up with my boyfriend because of what he did to my dog. I have a two-year-old German Shepherd, Spade, and one of the forms that I signed said if they found that she was pregnant, they would still spay her and that would terminate the pregnancy. I signed thinking that there wasn't any way that she would be pregnant. When the vet finished with the spay, they told me that she was pregnant, but it was pretty early on, so they did the spay anyways. I was shocked because I don't allow her to go with any male dogs that aren't neutered. I couldn't think of when she could have had the opportunity. I was advised not to spay her too soon because of joint issues in German Shepherds. Well, my boyfriend found out and he was so mad. He had been telling me spaying or neutering ruined dogs and made them not have any drive. I have no idea why he thinks that, but I did it anyways. He wouldn't talk to me for like a week. It's been a few months and yesterday a man knocks on the door and asks for my boyfriend. I stay in the living room and I overhear him ask my boyfriend where his puppy is and my boyfriend said that I spayed and terminated the litter. He promised the man that he will give him the money back and I go and ask him what on earth he means. He tells me that my boyfriend had my dog mate with his German Shepherd and was supposed to be getting one of the puppies from this. I was shocked and yelled at my boyfriend for doing that when he knew that I intended to spay her and never breed her. He always was telling me that she deserved to have a bloodline passed on, but I never thought that he would do this. He said the guy was lying as he was returning cash to him as a parent as he had prepaid for a puppy. I'm so mad that he won't even admit to it and I'm thinking of breaking up with him. But we have been together for three years and are talking about getting engaged. My mom thinks that I should try to forgive him as I'm getting older and I can't afford to wait much longer for kids. He has an ego and thinks that he's always right, but I cannot believe that he would do this. Edit, thanks to everyone for commenting. I think that my instincts are correct and that this is a really bad sign. I'm moving out and staying with a friend. I'll tell him on Monday after I finish moving out as he left for the weekend and I don't want him interfering. I don't know what to do about the lease as we still have four months left, but I'll talk to the landlady. All right, folks, what do you think? Not the jerk. I mean, what he did is not okay. This is your dog. You did not want to breed your dog. And he decided to go behind your back for some fast cash. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't care what this does to your dog. This is all just about him making a quick buck. He has no regard for you or your pet. I mean, why doesn't he get his own German Shepherd then? Because then he'd have to take care of it. So that's the thing that kind of boggled my mind is it sounds like OP is probably doing the majority of the care for this German Shepherd. And this was a dog that she wanted. And I don't know. I think that like if he wants a German Shepherd, then this is something that he can do. But I think pre uh, purebred type of things aren't actually really good for dogs in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that this is necessarily the healthiest thing to be doing with pu for getting puppies. And I know that purebreds uh, tend to have a lot of genetic diseases. They don't have a lot of uh, genetic diversity. It tends to be that dogs that are... Um, you know, uh, like mutts, for instance, are the healthiest of dogs because they have a much wider genetic diversity. So I think that OP's instincts are probably right here, mm -hmm. um, that he probably might not be the best partner, right? Right. And it sounds like OP's mom is only concerned about grandkids. And that's really a shame that she's not thinking about OP's well-being and is just like, but, but grandkids, like, you're, I think Opie said she was in her 20s. Like, you have plenty of time to have kids later on down the line if you want them. Yeah, I don't know that there was an actual age oh, mentioned not? in this, but um, there might be in the comments. I don't remember. And that. the thing is that, like, you shouldn't have kids for the sake of having kids. Right. It's not going to fix the problems with your partner. It's not mm -hmm. going to make them a better partner. And in fact, in many cases, it just allows your partner to act a bit worse mm -hmm. because 
they now know that you're locked in and you can't leave and stuff like that. Right. right. So if you're already having qualms about the relationship, that is not a time to have children with them. Yeah. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And seek help, for goodness sake, says. So he was going to get paid for one puppy. What about the other possible litter mates? Not the jerk. You never intended to breed your dog. And he went behind your back and did exactly that for profit. Edit. Today I learned what stud fees are. Also, he was mostly just trying to point out that he had no problem breeding them, them and then selling her dogs and puppies without discussing it with her. And OP replies, I'm sure that he would have tried to sell the other puppies. I have no idea how he planned to keep the pregnancy a secret, but he was probably only going to tell me when she was too far along for me to feel comfortable terminating the pregnancy. Honestly, I still feel guilty that I terminated a very early pregnancy, and I still think that he knows that he would have gotten his way if the vet didn't spay her. And Gargoyle says, not the jerk. If he's willing to ignore how you want to take care of your dog, there's a good chance that he'll ignore other decisions that you make for yourself. There are plenty of stories about partners tampering with birth control. And Zookeeper0304 says, Decisions ranging from how many kids you want to have, on how you raise those kids, circumstances if you have a boy, what to do if something went wrong during labor, he also has shown you that no matter what you say or how strongly you feel about it, he will absolutely steamroll your desire if given the choice and then lie to your face about it. Then, add insult to injury, your mother will likely side with him because she's as dense as concrete. That's a little mean. It is mean. I mean, she's she's grandchild motivated, that seems yeah. to be. Yeah. But she's not being a good parent to no. OP. She's not being a support system. Exactly. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for getting upset with my boyfriend after he dangled me over the edge of a balcony? I'm a 22-year-old female, and I was recently on a trip to Miami with my boyfriend, a 23-year-old male. We are staying in a nice hotel on the 15th floor, and one night, while we were out on the balcony, he thought that it would be a funny prank to pull me up and pretend to dangle me over the edge. For context, I weigh 115 pounds and he weighs 210 pounds, so he's significantly stronger than me. At first, I thought he was just going to lift me up for fun, but then he moved closer to the edge, where he actually leaned me over the balcony. I started freaking out and screaming at him to stop, but instead, he just laughed and kept doing it, pretending to drop me a couple of times before pulling me back up. I was terrified and I kept begging him to put me down, but he didn't stop until he finally got bored. When I got back on solid ground, I was shaking and really upset. I told him that what he did wasn't funny at all and he scared me to death. He responded by saying that I was overreacting and that he was just teasing me. He said that he would never really actually drop me and that I was being too sensitive. Now I'm wondering if I overreacted. He's been making me feel like I'm in the wrong for getting so upset over what he insists was just a joke and that I ruined the entire trip with bad vibes and energy. He has been a great boyfriend so far, so I'm surprised. Am I the jerk for being angry and shaken up over this? Edit, hi everyone, I'm reading and thank you so much for the advice. I know that I am missing many red flags and looking back I see more patterns that were concerning. I think I will think about this. Edit 2, I have continued reading your comments. I will be breaking up and hopefully it can go smoothly. I told my friends for safety. All right, folks, what do you think? Not the jerk, and I'm glad you're breaking up with this man. That is not funny. You know, someone who would dangle you over, like, 15 stories, and, like, it doesn't matter if he knows he's not going to drop you. Well, first of all, accidents can happen. Oh, yeah, what happens if he slipped? Yeah. Secondly, you know... Even if he doesn't drop you, like you, you're terrified out of your mind. Your partner should not be doing things to terrify you, to panic you. Yeah, I, I, this could have gone wrong. This really could have gone wrong. He put your life at risk. You didn't have a say in it. And he is just shown that he will do dangerous things and take you along for the ride. And you'll have no say in it. And mm -hmm. I don't think that is a good sign of a good partner. It doesn't matter how much he was just joking here. He, this is not a, this is a one and done situation, right? Yeah. You do this one time and you can expect that this is breakup worthy, right? Plain and simple. Like he should have seen this coming. 
Well, and it's just, it's very concerning behavior, you know, and like I really sympathize for Opie here because I'm also the size of person where people just like to pick me up because they can <laughs> and it, it, it can be, it gets very freaky. And if your partner doesn't immediately put you down when you ask them to, like, you know, that's not a good thing. Yeah. So I'm glad that OP is breaking up with this guy because I think that she needs to and get as far away from him as possible. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Kit Kat Patty Wax says, you should actually dump him. It'll only get worse. And Pass Part 2 says, OP, this is a man who finds your genuine fear and terror and helplessness begging and screaming amusing. And he endangers your safety to get a kick. He enjoys exercising his greater physical power over you in a way that scares you. He enjoys intense discomfort over what is happening and your inability to stop it. He enjoys making you squirm. I mean, he pretended to drop you just to squeeze some more terror out of you. What in the world? He's upset because you're calling a spade a spade and you're calling out his inappropriate behavior. It's complete BS that instead of apologizing for endangering and scaring you against your will as he should be, he's trying to tell you that it was just a joke or that you're too sensitive and that he has the nerve to tell you that you ruined the trip when it's on him, both for pulling this stunt and refusing to apologize. Causing genuine terror in someone is not a joke or a prank. He is not a good man. You did not overreact. And OP replies, thank you for the wake-up call. I realize now that he's always liked to joke and doesn't listen to me when I tell him to stop. I'm just used to not having boundaries. I will be working on that. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Protecting My Ex-Girlfriend? I'm a 30-year-old male, and I recently broke up with my ex-girlfriend, Sarah, a 28-year-old female, after dating for three years. Our relationship ended because she said that I was too controlling, but I only ever wanted what was best for her. We've been apart for two months now, but I still deeply care about her and worry about her constantly. Sarah has always been a bit naive, in my opinion. She trusts people too easily and often goes to sketchy parts of town because of her job as a social worker. Even when we were together, I would constantly check in to make sure that she was safe. After we broke up, I started getting anxious about not knowing where she was and if she was okay. I couldn't ask her directly because I knew that she wouldn't respond to my texts, so I decided to take action to ensure that she was safe. I bought a small GPS tracker one night when I knew that she was out with friends. I attached it to the underside of her car. This way, I could see where she was going and make sure that she wasn't getting into trouble. I told myself it was for her own protection. Over the next few weeks, I monitored her movements. I even used the information to anonymously warn her when she was in a dangerous area, sending her texts from a burner phone to suggest that she leaves. I thought that I was doing her a favor and made me feel better knowing that she was safe. However, things got complicated when she noticed that she was getting these messages. She became paranoid, thinking that someone was following her. She followed a police report and had the car checked. When they found the GPS tracker, she was horrified and called the police again. The police tra traced the tracker back to me. They called me in for questioning, and I was forced to explain everything. I tried to convince them that it was all for her safety, but they were not sympathetic. They told me that I had violated her privacy and could face charges for stalking and harassment. Sarah was furious and threatened to get a restraining order. My family and friends are divided. Some think that I went too far while others understand my intentions. I never meant to scare her. I just wanted to keep her safe because I still care about her. Am I the jerk for secretly tracking my ex-girlfriend's car to make sure that she was safe even if it meant crossing some lines? Yes. All right, folks, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, you're the jerk. Please get therapy, OP. What you did is not okay. Your ex-girlfriend is an adult who is capable of making her own safety and risk assessments. But OP is also deeply out of touch with what it is like to be a woman if he thinks getting anonymous text messages telling her to get out of a place is going to, like, be pacifying and make her feel better. Yeah, I'm wondering if this was actually written by the ex and she's just trying to frame it in such a way to like get information because there's bits in here that seem like from her perspective because they were like oh well she got paranoid and started you know looking around oh, i just then... thought he was reading into it yeah he might be reading into it as well 
So I think that OP, if this is the actual OP, then they are deeply disturbed individuals. You do not get to track people and under the pretense of doing it for their safety. You are not with this person, and even if you were with this person, you still wouldn't have the right to track them. And I think that it just drives the point home on why she said that she thought you were too controlling. Mm -hmm. So you are a controlling individual. You need to go into therapy and, you know, serve your time because I'm sure that there's going to be some jail associated with what you've done. And um, hopefully you can work on improving yourself. Try and put yourself into her shoes. Like, try and imagine if you had someone who was, like, sending you anonymous messages about your whereabouts, mm -hmm. you know, who seemed to be tracking your every move. Would you find that comforting? Would you trust some random number? Like, all of this just seems absolutely terrifying to me. Like, if I were to get this, I would be like, oh, my goodness. And I would not feel relieved to find out that it was, like, a stalker ex-boyfriend. No. That, that, would, that would not ease my mind either. No, I don't think it would ease anyone's mind. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Dear Part Snip 6802 says, This is why she broke up with you. You need to work on your obsession with needing to control, control every situation. And OP replies, Quite frankly, you're plain wrong. I'm willing to bet if I would never have done this, she would be in some serious trouble. Still does not see it at all. Mm -hmm. Extended Spike Protein says, This has to be rage bait. Lol, you can't be serious. And OP replies, I don't see how I'm trying to get a rise out of people. I'm doing what I feel is necessary. If you had someone that you loved more than life itself, and you know that their lack of survival instincts are going to cause problems with weirdos, what would you do to protect them? And I admit that the GPS was a little much, but my intentions were good. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here, and Amber, she has a joke. How did Dr. Frankenstein amuse the, his monster on vacation? Well, Dr. Victor Frankenstein amused his monster by creating a second smaller monster dog, and then that way they could play fetch with other body parts. He kept him in stitches. That too. That too. And I have licorice spice. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy, wonderful Wednesday, folks. I hope your Wednesday is more wonderful than these horrifying stories were. <laughs> Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please, have it a haiku for Haiku Wednesday. Do not stalk people. Do not stalk your partner. And do not stalk your ex. I think that works out pretty well. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.